Now that we've looked at the nervous system in detail, let's look at the other system used to coordinate responses in humans, the endocrine system. Now the endocrine system consists of glands that secrete hormones. Endocrine glands secrete their products hormones directly into the blood and they travel in the blood plasma around the body. Hormones only act on cells or organs that have the correct receptors and we call these target cells and target organs. Now here are the endocrine glands you need to know about in this course. The pituitary gland which is located just sort of under the, under the brain there, this little bit that hangs off the base of the brain. The adrenal glands which sit just on top of the kidneys. The testes uh, in the male, the ovaries in the female and the pancreas as well which is this gland that sits between the sort of kidneys there and the abdomen. Now you need to know about the following hormones, where they are released from, what their roles are and what their effects are. Adrenaline, insulin, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen. And if you are doing separate science, biology, um, and not dual award, you will also need to know about ADH, FSH and LH. So what we'll do is we'll go through these hormones one by one, we'll look at their source, we'll look at what they do and, and what their effects are. So let's start with adrenaline. Now adrenaline is what is called the fight or flight hormone. It's secreted from the adrenal glands and is released in times of stress or threat. And it prepares the body for extreme physical action, either by fighting off the threat or running away. And that's why it's called the fight or flight hormone. So it will change your body in order to make you better prepared to do those things. So it will increase your heart rate, increase your blood sugar levels, increase your breathing rate, increase your blood flow to muscles. All those things are gonna help you to run away quicker or to fight and survive. Insulin, now insulin is secreted from the pancreas and it controls the blood sugar levels. What happens is that after you eat a meal, your blood sugar level increases as you digest that food, your blood sugar levels go up, 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 and it's dangerous for them to go too high. So at that point, your pancreas will release this insulin. And insulin then makes those blood sugar levels go back down. And the way it does that is that it tells the liver to store that glucose, that blood sugar, as glycogen. So that it comes out of the blood and gets stored as glycogen in the liver. And then it brings the level back down. It's an example of homeostasis, keeping everything constant in your body. If you have type 1 diabetes, you won't produce any insulin and therefore you need to inject it manually. Testosterone. Now testosterone is the male sex hormone and it's released from the testes. Its main role really is to promote male secondary sexual characteristics. So these are characteristics that develop at puberty, not ones that you're born with, uh, but your characteristics that develop at puberty. And they include things like your voice breaking as a male, increased muscle, uh, pubic hair and facial hair growth, and probably most important, um, the, the beginning of sperm production, which happens um, due to this increase in testosterone. Progesterone is the female, uh, one of the female sex hormones released from the ovaries. And its role is to support pregnancy by maintaining the uterus lining. So for in order for you to carry a baby for nine months, you need your uterus lining where the baby is implanted and the placenta is growing on to stay nice and constant. You don't want that lining to break down, otherwise you may have a miscarriage. So progesterone stays nice and high all throughout pregnancy in order to maintain the lining of the uterus. We'll talk more about that uh, when we do the uh, menstrual cycle in the reproduction topic. Estrogen, also screed from the ovaries and is a female sex hormone. And it does have a role in the menstrual cycle, which again will be discussed later in another video. But for now, we'll just talk briefly about its role in promoting female secondary sexual characteristics. So the females during puberty, uh, their breasts develop, the menstrual cycle starts, they start releasing eggs and they start having periods, pubic hair growth and the hips widen in order to prepare for childbirth. ADH, now you may have uh, already watched my video on osmoregulation and the kidney from section 2i of IGCSE and if so you'll know about ADH. If not you may need to go and watch that video because I'll only briefly talk about it here but essentially ADH which is released from the pituitary gland has a role in what we call osmoregulation that means keeping water levels constant in the blood. It's an example of homeostasis again. The way it does that is it increases the permeability of your collecting duct in your kidney so that it reabsorbs more water into the blood. Now what that means basically is that if you're dehydrated the last thing you want to do is be urinating out lots of water because you'd get more and more dehydrated. So in your kidney, all the water that would go out in your urine it goes back into the blood in an area of the nephron in the kidney called the collecting duct. Again, re-watch the video on osmoregulation if you need to understand more about that. 
FSH and LH are our last two hormones. These are both involved in the menstrual cycle and will be discussed in detail in, the, in that video. Uh, essentially, FSH, which stands for follicle stimulating hormone, it stimulates a follicle, that's what it does. A follicle is, is sort of an immature egg in the ovary. So each month, and a female releases an egg as part of the menstrual cycle. And that egg has to develop, has to mature, and FSH stimulates that process to occur. LH is also secreted by the pituitary gland, just like FSH. It is another female sex hormone, and its effect is to then get that egg to be released at about day 14 of the menstrual cycle. You get a big surge in LH, and that egg that has been maturing due to the FSH then gets released due to this increase in LH.